Hey everybody, it's Danny here. We got our 21st episode of our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode here on the PS4. Guys, in the last episode, we went and uh, did the draft re-signs, and we made lots of signings to our team. Matt Duchesne re-signed, Semyon Varlamov re-signed, lots of uh, different signings. So if you want to go check that episode out, that's not too bad. It was it was pretty a pretty chill episode, not too much aside from the signings. The draft wasn't like super uh, exciting as past ones were, but you know what? It's okay. Um, we're really focused on just trying to keep this team together, and uh, that's what I sort of want to talk about first before we dive into free agency. Um, so I asked you guys about what we should do with uh, Soderberg and Zadarov in the last episode, and I've sort of come to a conclusion. Soderberg, I don't exactly know... I think I know what I'm going to trade for him, <clears throat> but uh, Zadarov, I'm not planning to trade him for a couple reasons, and I will go into that uh, shortly. But first, uh, let's go and trade Soderberg. So the one thing is, although it's minor, I don't really want to play off against him in the in like in the playoffs. So unless this team makes the finals, uh, I'm hoping it will be an Eastern Conference uh, team at this point. Uh, that he will be going to, and uh, not LA. LA wanted him, but um, I just decided to stop on LA so I could show you guys. No, no one really wants him because he's 33, one year left with all of that money. Um, actually, it's not a bad contract. It's just age-wise, he a lot of teams don't want that. But Montreal, um, Pittsburgh, I don't really want to do that because they were in the finals just this last season, right, against us. Um, I would rather just trade to Montreal, I think, um, because Montreal has quite a few uh, assets that I would be willing to trade for. Uh, first of all, they have a first and a second and a third. They have all these draft picks that they'd be wanting to give up. Give up. Um, they have quite a few good prospects that I'd be really interested in taking. Vorbev and, Bar uh, and Bartlett, uh, top four defensemen, top six forward, both in the, se the lower 70s, uh, could develop into nice players for us in the future. And then one other player who hasn't developed for them, Mikhail Sergeyev at 77 overall, 21 years old, low elite. He has the potential, um, but like these guys, um, like Aaron Bartlett, that's first of all, that's a great name. Um, his, his, the way that, like, I like his stats because like Aaron uh, here, his passing and his offensive awareness is actually... Um, uh, can we go over to him? Uh, it's higher than Sergachev's. And as an offensive defenseman, you want that. And then that will get you points. The offensive awareness is the biggest thing. That's how you get points. I've seen a lot of a lot of defensemen that get tons of points just because their offensive awareness is 90. Their, their defensive stats will maybe be like 80, in the 83s, 84s. If you have the awareness, the offensive awareness, you will get points. So that's partially why I'm sort of leaning towards going after Bartlett instead. But Sergachev has the potential. He's already almost NHL ready. We could play him this year. And I mean, reliably, he is more of a defensive-minded defenseman. So, um, you know what? I will decide to go after Sergachev. Um, let's see if we can... It's just, I don't want to go after all of them because we do have a lot of defensemen. Uh, but first, let me just... First, let me just uh, go to the defenseman and show you guys what I'm talking about with uh, Zadarov and then our other defenseman. First of all, Truba's uh, value went straight up, but I'm still not willing to trade him. Johnson, I want to ask you guys something. The defenseman that you guys, the puck moving defenseman that you guys are trying, that you guys, you guys desperately want me to get, um, like, what's the criteria? Because Johnson has played great, uh, great. He's got solid point totals, 20 points pretty much every year plus defenseman, um, I mean, how is that not a puck-moving defenseman? And then what's wrong with Barry? I mean, this these are Barry's stats. 64 points, and that was the one year he was a zero. 50 points, and his best plus-minus year, and then more points and a, a bit less plus-minus. Like, I just, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm curious to know what your guys' criteria is for an, a, a puck-moving defenseman. I'm assuming it means it can be two-way or offensive, or just in great uh, offensive stats like puck skills and offensive awareness. Um, do you guys want a young defenseman? Do you want a top two defenseman? Do you just want to see the role that actually says top two instead of like Barry being top four, even though that's totally wrong? Like I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of confused. And right now as our defense stands, 
Truba, and I believe Beegrass can be a top four. And just together, they had a great playoff run just together. Like, I really do think they're our top forward pairing for the for the future. And Zadarov, for that matter, also, he's younger. Uh, you guys were saying he may want to get a bit much money in his next contract. But, I mean, although the points aren't really there, and, I mean, playoff-wise, minus two in 23 games last season, he was a plus five when we did make it to three, to round three. And those are the top six. I mean, he's developing. The only one thing I don't like is his two awareness stats. But, I mean, in general, what if he becomes a 90 overall or 88 or 87? Like, he can easily replace Johnson that way. We don't have to trade for a guy who's already there and give up so many more assets. And, I mean, trade value-wise, I just don't see why it makes sense. Plus, we won the cup with this decor. So... I'm like I'd really just say even just keep on developing defensemen to find someone, but for all the assets you have to give up, I don't think it's worth it. So uh, I'm not sure which of these defensemen I want to go for quite yet, but I think I might actually go for both of them. I do want that Ford though, Vorbev, sort of because uh, he is uh, I like his stats. He has a really good shot, and his offensive awareness is up there as well. Uh, already in the 80s, pretty much all of it. So. I think what I might do, let's go and check out the stats. Okay, he hasn't played yet. They're all first round picks, so I sort of feel like I'd be messing with this team a bit. But I would like to get these guys. I'm just, I, I think I only want to get one defenseman. I'm just trying to think. Offensive defenseman, maybe that's what you guys want. Bartlett, top four, Sergachev. I think I'm going to go, they want to give up these two defensemen. Sergachev is not ideally what I'm looking for. And if he hasn't developed yet, I'm not sure if I want to get him. So let's go after Vorbev and Bartlett for Soderberg. Um, we can get a draft pick out of these guys. Um, although both of them I actually checked, they're both first round picks, um, Vorbev and Bartlett. Let's just say I think they are just getting rated lower. They're valued lower to Montreal. Montreal wants to give these guys up so they can get another forward in their top six. So will it go through? Soderberg for Vorbev, Bartlett, and a third round pick. And I doubt anybody will think Montreal came on the short end of the stick of that trade, so it's a done deal. I don't want to make... I didn't... I think Soderberg needed to go. I think his value was just perfect, and we are we won the cup with the guys we have, and I like what our roster's looking like. Cap space issues may eventually arise. I just think it makes the most sense. We get assets for the future, and we can trade away a guy who's getting into his later years in his 30s. So Soderberg, thank you for your time here in Colorado. You played really well for us for these past couple of years. But it's time to move on. So, uh, I guys, I I may be okay with trading Zadorov eventually. He's on one of our only uh, defensive defensemen. And, I mean, he just, I don't know. To, to me, Zadorov, okay, this is actually the biggest thing, morale. I even just realized it right here, um, Zadorov. Um, look, I think the trade will make us a better team. And we'll be better off in the long run, though it may not seem like it right now. Work with us. Trust in us, Johnson. I need you to... Uh, he's more all dropped. I, I understand that. I mean, Soderberg was a big part. So uh, let's go see. Um, where was he? Um, Zadarov. He was... Uh, I actually realized when I when I looked at him... Wait, what? Is he in the AHL? Oh, it's because he's not signed. Okay. I will show that in a sec. Uh, we can do the morale meetings for those guys maybe another time. Or just leave it. If we go to sign free agents, you'll never guess who he's best friends with on the team. Arguably one of our best playoff performers, one of our best players in general, and you can't check there. Where the heck can you check? He's best friends with Duchesne, and he's friends with McKinnon, and, like, there's... N I just don't like the idea of getting rid of a guy who's already... He just fits in well with the team, and I just don't think there's any point. Cap-wise, for how much he's asking, if he does develop even more, I think this is a good cap hit or something, like 3.85 or something like that. That's... That's a good deal. Uh, whether it's two years, three years, four years, three years till he's a UFA, um, I think within that time he, we'll be able to sign him long term, or Johnson will be gone, or something like that. So uh, four years we could try for a bit more, and that actually might be not a bad idea. I might do four years at four million. Um, do I want to do that long term or short term? I think long term right now. But you know what? We're going to go for cheap. We're going to go for cheap if we can. So let's go for 3.75 for three years. See if Zadarov accepts. 
Um, and now let's go and sign that goalie that you guys were all uh, uh, probably into. I mean, it seemed like uh, it was pretty general uh, that we probably should sign this guy. So uh, let's go and give him a bit of a contract. We're not going to max out his contract. If he doesn't want to join with us, that's okay. you got to make it sort of fair. But we're going to give him some more money so he can hopefully choose to sign with us. Um, let's go for Fords. There's not many prospects that are younger. I think I showed you guys in the last episode. But it's pretty much set in stone, I think, our team. We could use a, a top six defenseman, but I'm not sure we really have how much cap they, like the cap that these guys want. It doesn't really make sense for us. 25 points in the AHL. Dalton Prout, he's not that great. I've been looking at quite a few guys. Petrovic, um, uh, who else? Uh, we were cautious with us last year. Um, top six, the role guys, uh, Gunnarsson and Manson. They just want a lot of money, especially if I want to go down in years, which I sort of do. And so I'm going to say that we, we can probably wait till uh, the start of the next season. We have some young guys that are coming up on D. It should be okay. Um, again, I mean... I think our defense is set. We just need one more top six defenseman. So we'll see if Malak develops. Biega could potentially be that guy or uh, or someone else. But I just think it, it makes sense right now. So I will go and sim up to the uh, start of the preseason. And I will see you guys there. Oh, wait. Just a second. I just completely forgot. Boris Plekhanov. Uh, he signed. And Zadarov. Okay. So never mind. We actually have to make sure that we sign Zadarov. So we'll just give him a bit more money. I think three years. Uh, three year contract I'm okay with. Once again, just because um, where we'll be in three years. Where will he be in his development? So that makes sense. Um, three years. Let's see. Four million. Three year, four million. I think four million is a fair deal. I'm going to give him four million. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it then do wait do I want to for no I actually did look at our lineup we should be set um, we could use a winger defensively depth wise but Gabriel Bork could be in the lineup next year I'm not sure that's I guess you guys can let me know if you think uh, he should be in the lineup uh, Delorier he's actually been inside GMs he's actually been pretty good for me he scored quite a few goals before but I don't know uh, Brickley E-Rat is apparently still alive um, Cliche Roussel. I remember when Roussel used to have insane defensive categories. Is there anybody depth-wise we can take here? We could sign some guys for the AHL. How about Nathan Gerby? One year. Yeah, sure. Point, uh, point 0.95. No, only left-wingers. Centers. Um, for the AHL, I think we do need a, an AHL center. We do have a, de a prospect that's developing, but we could also add someone else. Kruger. Oh, yeah, we could add Kruger. He wouldn't be too bad for playoffs. So why not? We'll add him. He wants that much, so we'll give him 0. 0.95. One-way contract is okay. And you know what? I That one guy, who was it? Uh, Martinson? And we'll leave him. Um, I think he was a center, but that's okay. Uh, is there any other defensive forwards that we can call upon to be on the squad? I think that should be it. Lars Eller, uh, Penelope Pouliot, uh, Alexander Radulov, he has some insane, off, insane offensive stats. Same with Ennis, Shahan, Galliardi. Ooh, Galliardi would be interesting. Solid defensive stats. Actually, I wouldn't mind that for depth. How was the season last year? Was he playing in the NHL last year? He must have. Minus 20? Holy moly. 45 points, 18 goals? Okay, you know what? That just seems really interesting, so I'm going to give him a contract. If he wants to come, he can. If not, that's okay. Martinson, depth-wise, what the heck? I'll give you I'll give you that much if you want to come. You got one more chance to sign with your former team, cup winners. A lot of centers, but a lot of them don't have great face-offs, so they'll probably be playing on the wing. And also depth for the AHL and for our team. So let's see if we can get Zadarov on the squad. Galliardi. Excuse me, Galliardi. Okay, this EA, this is the one thing I like. I I like the new extra comments, but I'm looking for a team that's more of a playoff contender. Guys, brace yourselves. Excuse me. Really, really, we just won the cup, Galliardi. You're so dumb. You're. I don't even want you on the team. You're. You. You can't think common sense. 
Marcus Kruger signed with the team. Martinson declined. That's okay. Gerby signed for the AHL. And then Zadarov uh, is now back on the squad. That's very nice. So Kruger. I think Kruger is a pretty stellar signing, honestly. He could end up being our fourth line center. But, um, I mean, you guys can chip, chip in on that. Finally, we're done with all the signings. And I will see you guys at the start of the preseason. Okay, guys, we're done the simulation, and now we are here at the preseason. Um, I was just thinking while we were actually simming, um, our team actually didn't even crack 40 wins, if you didn't notice. We actually were like 39, 29, and 14, I think. And um, so I'm thinking this year, I'm really hoping that this team at least can uh, get to 40 wins, be, be or 45 wins even, have a strong season, and then continue to uh, play with consistency through the playoffs. That's what I'm sort of hoping for this year. Obviously, the Stanley Cup I'm um, still my main goal. But um, if we could have a better season even, I mean, President's Trophy would be nice. But, uh, I mean, the one thing I want, I do want to note actually is I really think that with our goaltending, that is going to be a big thing. I think Nuvrith is a great add. I'm glad he is, is still uh, uh, on the squad. Um, and that will be the – I think that tandem can definitely lead us through the season. So the big thing was development because we have a lot of forwards and a lot of just players in general that can be developed. So Plekhanov and Werner are both 78 overall. It's perfect. Plekhanov's a minor starter and a minor backup for Werner. So we got some two goal good goalies there. Malak, he's a minor top two. He has an insane, what the heck, slap shot accuracy of 87. He's like Weber insanity. Um, honestly, his stats don't look that great. Offensive and defensive awareness are definitely two things to note. It seems like another Nikita Zadarov here, except for the right side. So you guys can shim on that if you guys or pitch in on that or whatever. If you guys think that maybe he should be um, in the NHL or not. Uh, Biega could obviously be in the NHL as well. Uh, Bigras is still in top six. I don't understand that. He was on the top four last year. He was doing fine. Truba... Uh, 86 overall. Zadarov still an 86. Johnson is an 87. Just because of morale, he can still get back up to 88. Barry is a 90. That's very nice. Uh, right wingers. Patan's an 84. So his offensive skill just got even better. He's still not much of a defensive player, but that's okay. He's still a very strong player. Uh, Como is still a third line checking forward. That's good. 82 though. Uh, Thoral and Sislo have to move you back down. Vorbev, he's a 75. There's the stats for him. Stat increase. Yakpov's an 84. He's a depth forward. Um, I'm curious to see if we exit out and enter back into the GM mode if he'll be still an 84. Now, what are the what? This is the big thing with these guys. Where should Grundstrom and uh, Dennis Daly, especially, go? Because these guys may be ready for the NHL, and they may be more of uh, third liners if we're going to play them. So you guys can let me know. Maybe we need to give them one more year in the uh, AHL. Uh, we got Baron, who's a 77. Nicholson, uh, once again, another young center there. Pavel Bure, uh, Krill Biggs, and Trevor Barry. So lots of good centers down there in the AHL. Ben Smith, Kruger, left wings. We can move Gerby down. Uh, right wings, uh, centers. So five, five, and uh, three. So that means we have one extra four. That's good. And then defense. Uh, Biega could probably be our extra D-man, or we could send him down. He is a, def a depth defenseman. No, he's actually a minor top defenseman, so, or minor top two, I think. Yeah, minor top two. So maybe we want to play Malak and Biega together. I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think. I will definitely go to free agency and go check out, but and check out the guys that are available. But uh, there you go. That is the the team, the roster that we should be going with into the season for the most part. Best lines. Uh, okay, so these are the lines that it says uh, should be going into next season. That's interesting. I, I would definitely uh, agree that I think Duchesne and McKinnon should uh, stay as uh, the two centers. I think we need to have two strong centers, and Duchesne and McKinnon both clearly show that they are very good and capable. Uh, Duchesne was our probably better center. Uh, should we play him on the top line? Should McKinnon? I think McKinnon should play on the top line. He's younger. He still has time to develop. And if he can have a great offensive season, then that would be great. Uh, Lannis Cog could play with him. He's a second line forward. Marchand, second line forward. Grigorenko, second line forward. Patan's a third line scoring forward. Third line scorer, third line scorer, depth forward. So uh, what it could look like is we could end up doing that, honestly. Um, Grigorenko. 25, Patan, 24. 
McKinnon should be up there. Marchand, uh, 26 for Landis Gog. Any chance of him developing even more, getting offensive seasons? Uh, you know what? I think that should be good. Grigorenko, we could even go with those lines. Uh, Patan being on that top line may be good because Landis Gog is also more of a defensive forward. Marchand as well, but he has more offensive stats than defensive. Um, Yakpov probably will be a right winger, and then we can either switch him, even do the playmaker power forward sniper combination but I mean last time we tried that they were Matan and Rantanen were both my, major minuses I'm pretty sure uh, Como will play in the penalty kill that way he still uh, he stays an 82 plus he has good defensive stats so he can be there uh, Bork is a depth uh, like he's a minor scoring forward Kruger could play in the penalty kill or the end or the fourth line and uh, there you go so that's the lines there best lines for the AHL uh, Dennis Daly is the captain, so maybe we should keep him down there. Grundstrom, you can play there as well. 60 for faceoff, 71 for faceoff, 75 for faceoff. So maybe do that. That way you get the, the two centermen, or you get the, the best players on there. Uh, Grundstrom could be a centerman, actually. If we want to develop him into one, that could be uh, uh, an interesting case. And then we could switch him with Nicholson or uh, Baron. But I'll just do best lines for now. No, not scratch player, best lines. There you go. Uh, we'll move Vorbev up, don't worry. I won't, we won't do any sim, we're just uh, checking what the roster will look like for both spots. So I think uh, the biggest uh, thing to fill in would be either the fourth line position if you don't think Borg or Cougar's ready, or Smith, uh, and then defensemen definitely. We need two defensemen, unless Biega is our uh, seventh guy, that, or Malak is our seventh guy, then you guys can let me know what you think about that. Um, I'm sorry if you didn't like the moves I made. Um, I just I think that they were the smartest moves that I could make, and I didn't want to keep Soderberg for too much more. And uh, Turris is available, so we could go after Kyle Turris or Jake Gardner if they want one years within the BNA preseason. We could sign Gardner and or Turris to cheap contracts. You guys can let me know what you think about that. We could actually do Turris. He could be a very nice acquisition, uh, especially if he goes back up to like 87 or something. Very cheap guy. Uh, but that is another playmaker. Just keep that in mind. Um, Spruill, uh, he's actually done very well for us in the past. He's a top six defenseman three years. I actually, you know what, I think we should sign him right now because um, we'll, we'll give him one year. And I'm okay with giving him, wait, we have 8.3 yeah, 8 in cap space. So that's that's a fine contract. We're going to try and sign him for 1.8. I know Buffalo's interested, but they've been actually... I'm, an in, I'm, I'm so dumb. He's an RFA. Why the heck did I not realize that? Okay, so I didn't save. Um, A third round pick. I even still take that. Oh, that's so dumb, though. If they, I, you know, I wouldn't mind if they match it, but we'll see. Actually, we can probably sim a bit just to see what happens, but defensively, is there anybody? We could go with the younger guy, Moro, maybe. I mean, depth forward, maybe his potential to develop into a top six defenseman. We could still sign Nikita, and that would probably not my favorite defenseman, but um, arguably, I mean, he hasn't played for a couple years apparently. Um, I don't know. I think one year left uh, as a top six defenseman, he could even be a seventh guy or a depth defenseman, like fit to be in their role. Make uh, Mikhail Wraith or uh, Trotman. Uh, so, I mean, those are just examples. So. You guys can let me know what you think about defense. Um, there, yeah, we're, let's go and see it, what happens with Sproul because I don't want... I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen. Uh, okay, so we will accept that in a heartbeat. Yes, he's going to apparently accept that twice. Uh, not willing to match your offer. A third round pick for Sproul. Well, we got a top six defenseman. I'm saying we play Sproul. So I'm okay with that. You know what? He has done well for us in the past. I'm not saying he'll get like 60 points again, but I mean, it's it's just uh, options, right? Um, let me know what you guys think of the moves we did. <laughs> I can't believe I just carelessly gave away a third like that, but you know what? It's not bad. We're giving up a draft pick to hopefully add in a younger guy. And I mean, if he does well, he could be a top six defenseman for uh, a while for this team if we sign him long term after this year. I don't know, but that was just... In general, all the moves and all the signings that we did in this episode, let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, let me know uh, what we should do on the defensive end and just anything, line combinations, whatever you think. And anyways, I will see you guys in the next one.